Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining the lecture, um, the workshop. Um, as you see in the schedule uh, this afternoon, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to learn about data standardization. So let me introduce myself again. I am Tsuyoshi Kosuya from uh, National Museum of Nature and Science. Uh, actually, um, my profession is, uh, I'm a taxonomist. I'm a taxonomist of fungi, which is a kind of minor organism for many of you, but actually the majority, one of the majority in, in the nature. So I usually uh, talk about uh, taxonomy of fungi. So this is a kind of uh, well, second show, I, I should say. Um, but uh, well, I have been doing the. I have been working as a node manager of GBIF uh, for the last uh, four years of Japan, and also uh, I have been working as an Asian representative of GBIF Asian uh, region, a representative for the last uh, three years, uh, together with Yuhon as my deputy. So um, this this afternoon we are going to learn about the basic very basic structure about how uh, GBIF is handling the data, um, about the Darwin work. And uh, you're going to learn about the importance of uh, data standardization. Okay? Uh, so, anybody in this room, if, well, uh, let me ask you one question first. Um, if you are, well, whether if you know Darwin core, if you know Dali, if you heard about it, now we call it the illustration. Oh, oh that's cool. That's so, if you have used Dali Core as a part of your database, please. Right? Okay. So, if you can explain Dali Core, raise your hand. Then I will let you do it. <laughs> anyway. But well, actually, myself is not uh, perfectly familiar with Darwin Core because the Darwin Core terms includes more than 150 of well, various terms uh, plus uh, some kind of extension or more additional fields. So you have to be familiar with the uh, kind of database, biodiversity database anyway. But uh, well, think that the uh, imagine. Excel file. Uh, start from the uh, Excel file, um, stating various uh, fields and having values of each field. Right. And I'd like to start from the uh, uh, okay. Um, through this uh, lecture, I'm going to give you some uh, training time, and you also have uh, time for work on your by yourself uh, using your own computers uh, provided uh, based on the provided data which we uh, prepare. So through this lecture, um, I want you to understand the importance of data format for standardization. And you are going to experience the standardization process by yourself using the data later. And you also, uh, please, understand how how Dali Core is being used as a data standardization process. Okay, let's go back to the uh, whatever I talked in this after in this morning. I said that the biodiversity information or biodiversity data includes various elements like taxonomy, names, synonyms, descriptions, traits, and uh, how often they will appear and where and how they are observed or obtained. So these are the major elements, what, when, where, and how. At the one of these, what, is strongly related with taxonomy, and the other four elements may be related to occurrence or some kind of sampling event. Event is a kind of action of sampling um, to see or catch or to collect the organisms itself. 
And let me uh, repeat again about where are the resources of biodiversity data information. And one is observation. You see a number of organisms by yourself or by machines. Uh, so that case, um, that, that is about surveys. And uh, well, you also keep a number of specimens. A uh, number of specimens are kept in uh, museums and herbariums and with the label to state what kind of organisms these are. And these information may be fixed to papers and already being published in papers, in taxonomic papers, or checklists. And also, taxonomic paper uh, deal with the, uh, the trait or characteristics of each uh, organism. Uh, sometimes, well, all, all these uh, taxonomic papers include where they occur and the taxonomic information together with the specimen information. Okay. We are going to, to increase or to, uh, to maximize the information. We want to merge these information. For instance, observation data and the data from the specimen levels and the data from the literature. Right. And let's merge the data and merge into uh, one Excel sheet that all describes all these uh, elements. And here is one example. Let's merge the data from the observation. Well, here is one, only one example. And it says, Sparrow was observed in uh, 7 p.m. April 1 last year in Taipei. And uh, this one, table two, states about the specimens. And this species, actually this was uh, described by uh, This was described by myself, later I will show you, um, on this day at Botanical Garden and collected by myself and identified. And uh, another table is here. Uh, there is a species, a uh, tree species called Pagas Granata in, observed in this way at here with the uh, well, very accurate longitude and latitude, but also uh, providing the name of the place. All these have the information about what species was located and when and where. But you see, if you're going to merge this in the Excel simply, it doesn't mean anything. Because it's not the, uh, well, uh, just under this name, this comes. And under this one, and this comes. So it doesn't mean anything. Or to merge these in a more harmonized way, we need to standardize the, the columns. So let's have the column data format is the issue. And to do that, use standardized column names. It is of course possible that you can, uh, well, you can have your own column names, but if, the, uh, if there is a world standardized uh, column names, that, that may be a better to use. And that is Darwin Core. So Darwin Core is a kind of a main standard to be used in the, um, to be used in the biodiversity data. Actually, looking back to Darwin Core, uh, the history of Darwin Core, well, think about uh, the books in any case, when you go to libraries, you can get and uh, you can get standardized information about books. That's because the information about the books, who wrote this book, who was published, uh, where it is published, how many pages, all these information are being standardized. Well, standardization occurred not naturally, but based on some kind of a meeting, and that was happened in the place or doubling. And that kind of information standard was called doubling core and now maintained as doubling core metadata initiative, but still maintained. And by having those kind of uh, information attached to the data source itself, so what do you call this data? Metadata, right? 
by having a standardized metadata, we were able to have, uh, we are able to search the data source more easily at the more standardized way. Now, they start to think that if we can get the standardized metadata for books, maybe we can do that the same thing for biodiversity data. So people who called taxonomic data working group, TTWG. Currently, it is renamed as Biodiversity Informatics, uh, sorry, Biodiversity Information Study. But they still, they still state TTWG uh, for their abbreviations. So they develop uh, the similar standard and paying attention, paying respect to this famous Darwin, they, uh, they turned, uh, they started to name it uh, after the uh, after Darwin said Darwin Core. So Darwin Core was named after the biologist Darwin to, to, uh, to describe about the biodiversity. And uh, well, they started to, uh, they stated more than 150 items. This is so-called field in database uh, terms to describe biodiversity. And uh, all these 150 terms are, are related to what species, where, and where, wh when, and where, and what those things. And currently, Darwin Core is uh, kind of a de facto global standard in biodiversity database format. Right. You can learn about the Darwin Core uh, going to the uh, 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 this uh, by going to the, uh, this website. And also, here I will show. <laughs> so this is the website of PDWG uh, for the, uh, uh, or in short, we call it Texas. This is the web page, and uh, if you go to the web page, you can see that, that the explanation of the DAWI core in very, very detail and here. Starting from what is introduction, what is DAWI core, and uh, what other things. And if you have time, please take a look at these. And it is very lengthy and wordy. So, and it also provides quick reference guide to describe the term index and these things. So each of these separated uh, vertical uh, bars called pipe are the uh, Darwin core terms. And you see a number of number of elements are incorporated to the Darwin core. And this website also uh, provides the definition or uh, the examples or comments for each of these terms. But it's too difficult to understand each of these. So I summarized the important things and provided you as a part of the text. Uh, please have a look at the uh, nine pages, or actually 18 pages thick uh, kind of the report. And I put the, uh, uh, the numbers of each uh, fields or, or terms of Dalingor and provided the explanation including the uh, examples and comments. So please take a look at that. And then, going back to the slides. Well, since Darwin Core is more than 150 fields, so many terms, it is being clustered. It, it has been grouped in several, uh, several groups called classes. So class is well taxonomic term, but uh, it is used as a different uh, meaning in Darwin Core. Okay, how many terms are there? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine classes. And uh, the first one is about the record level terms. And this is about the information to manage each record. Record is a set for the field uh, to describe a single set of the record, a single set of data. And it provides the uh, links with other data in other databases. And the occurrence is about when and where the data was recorded. Organisms is about the organism itself. But uh, this is about the nature of the given organisms, such as textural names or labels, or whether the organism was recognized as a clone or a colony, or so on. And uh, well, you see that the organisms may be closer or similar to taxon, but the taxon is the taxonomic information about the scientific names of higher rank. While taxon is about higher taxonom uh, taxonomic information, organisms is a kind of a physical nature of the organisms. That's the great difference. And then we come materials, samples, living specimen, preserved, uh, preserved specimens. Uh, you can choose You can choose one of these because if you choose one, it conflicts with others. It's not possible that the uh, well, living specimen is also preserved specimen, right? So you have to choose one of these. And then, about uh, how event, human observation, or machine observation. This is about how the record was, uh, how, the, uh, how the record was, of, uh, was obtained. And this is location, the location where the record was observed. And here we have never talked about that, geological context. Geological information, this is about the fossils. So in this case, if we input the data in here, we can also incorporate the fossil information. That makes the range of Darwin core applicable. And uh, identification. This is about the who and when it was identified by using what kind of references. So it's deeply related to taxon, but it's not the uh, taxon itself. It's about the identification process, right? So please understand that the Darwin core is subdivided into several groups, but you don't have to state each of groups. All you need is to know about the Darwin core terms or fields in the database, okay? Then what kind of fields are there? Uh, let's have a well, quick look at these, uh, oh, uh, these uh, terms of each classes. I don't go into the detail, but uh, if you have a uh, well, look at these, you can imagine these. And uh, having well, any terms starting from these terms is already used in other databases, uh, DCMI, Darwin, uh, Darwin Core uh, Metadata Initiative. So it also provides the uh, compatibility with other databases. So this is the good point. Okay, um, starting from type and uh, well, institution code, collection code, data set, the owner and basis of records like observation or specimens, uh, information withheld, uh, those things. And uh, well, about the occurrence, well, catalog numbers and numbers recorded by whom, uh, how many, and uh, well, what kind of uh, quantity, and uh, well, how, uh, how we uh, count, uh, or how we count these organisms, uh, like uh, one clone or two clones, or one individual, two individual, or something like that. And also, well, some other things, a number of these things. And uh, for the classes, uh, for the organisms, well, organism names, and the organism scope, and occurrence, and uh, one of the other remarks. For the classes, uh, material samples, living specimen, or preserved specimens, but this states only ID, because, well, this only includes ID. 
And uh, well, Darwin, when we are looking at Darwin board, you have a number of IDs. IDs. IDs are a simple numbers or strings, but uh, well, it is used to refer to other databases or referring to inner uh, databases, uh, in, inner um, uh, some other elements, some other records in, in the database. So if you are consistently use the same IDs for same thing, um, you can connect using uh, you can connect other elements by using this ID. Okay, let's go. Uh, event, human observation, all these things here. And here, when you are going to location, we have a number of number of elements to describe the locations, uh, like an island, country, country code, and county and municipality, locality, and regional locality. Sometimes Darwin Core is uh, accompanied with the word verbatim. Verbatim means original. That means originally described here. But uh, later, uh, locality may be changed. So you can include both data. And uh, if you have the range in a uh, certain range about the elevation, you can use the minimum or maximum. So you can also deal with a certain uh, digits uh, having a range. OK, geological context is something like that. Uh, I never can explain this one because I'm not familiar with fossils. An identification, who identified, and how, uh, how accurate this identification is. I'm talking about the classes, I'm talking about the taxon. Yeah, again, uh, starting from kingdom, phylum, class, order, and genes, a genus, and subgenus, specific episode. These are separately included, but at the same time, they, uh, they can be put in a single field, like uh, science, uh, scientific names, where scientific names? Somewhere, four, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, scientific names. So it's really, it seems very, really, really complicated. And if you have a look at the, uh, the printed reference that I provided, well, you'll be much more confused to see. So in order to reduce your anxiety, um, I'd like to provide uh, some hint uh, to concentrate these things as the basis. I'm uh, talking about the class taxon, uh, genus, specific episode, and authority, and the vernacular name. Vernacular is a kind of a local names, like what we call uh, Fagus, Fagus Crenata in uh, Buna. I like maybe in Chinese names, some species may be called in some other ways, in India, India way, like that. And about the event, when, so year, month, day, these are the bases, right? And about the location, so which country and where, and uh, maybe if you have, if you don't have the range of the uh, uh, elevations, you can just put one, uh, one figure, one digit in a minimum elevation in meters. But the, remember this, when you're using this, you have to use the meters, right? And decimal latitude and decimal longitude about the coordination. So I'll talk about this later. Now, please think about the next uh, example. So this is the specimen I collected somewhere. And now you have the uh, printed uh, exercise, right? In printed exercise format. And please have a look at the upper side. Don't look at the downside, because it's the answer. <laughs> so please try to think, okay? A specimen of fungus, oh, oh sorry, a specimen of fungus uh, collector's number 2015-316. Uh, 360 was collected by myself in Mount Tsukuba, uh, located in Tsukuba City in the Baraki Prefecture, Japan, on this date. And it was parasitizing on a cupule of Fagus Granata Blumen, this one. So the coordination of the collection site was this in northern and this at the eastern uh, latitude. 
and the altimeter uh, elevation was 870 meters. So the specimen was brought up to my laboratory and identified as the day since I fell along these tipitata, um, having my name as an authority um, because I, uh, I described this species. And this species belongs to this family, older, class, and phylum, and kingdom, fungi, and identified by myself. And it was now heat dried and registered, kept as a specimen, as TNS F1234 in the Mycology Herbarium of National Museum of Nature and Science. Okay, describe this. Try to find a suitable Darwin core terms and describe that in a, well, for instance, Excel sheet. So to do that, you have to think which element goes to be which classes and which terms of Darwin core, right? So please don't look at the downside and start to think about this for, say, uh, five minutes, right? And uh, well, please make a note which may be in, uh, which may be described in which form, uh, which may be in, in which terms. So you now have the, uh, the re reference of Darwin core, uh, the full list of Darwin core uh, terms. So you can choose which one goes to where. Okay. So let's. Uh, well, I, I'll I'll stop at five minutes. So please think. So do you have any music for five minutes?
Seems that uh, you are having a test. <laughs> but uh, well, even if you are familiar with the Darwin chord, sometimes you can stop at this kind of uh, problem and uh, well, try to apply. Um, then you will have you will be able to have find discovery issues. Um, so in this case, um, right. So I checked the color. Um, I differentiated the, uh, the classes by the difference of colors. So this goes to the record level and the event, location, occurrence, and something, and uh, uh, identification. OK, a specimen of fungus, so collect those numbers is one of the part of record numbers, the record level terms. So this is the original, uh, uh, original um, uh, record of the uh, the collectors, and uh, finally it is being registered as this as an official. So once the official uh, record uh, official uh, specimen number is given, and then we can formally use this one. But uh, for reference, we can also refer to this one because sometimes the paper only refers to this one, uh, this number. Okay, and this is the collector. And these are the location of the information. And finally, well, this is together with uh, longitude and latitude indicated here, together with the elevation. So it was parasitizing on a pupil of Fagas Granata. This is a kind of uh, occurrence information. And uh, together with, well, the species associated with this species, uh, this species. Okay. And the specimen was finally identified as this species. Okay. And uh, well, the classification is being given in here. But if the classification is not given in here, then you will have to seek for the classification. Or you don't have to do it. Uh, you don't have to do it, but, uh, find the classification anyway. And uh, this is the identifier. Happened to be uh, well, happened to be identical with the collector. And this was finally heat dried, and now resisted as this number at our museum. So TNS is the short for National Museum of Nature and Science. I mean, this is the abbreviation of the Habarium of TNS, internationally recognized. Um, in Index Herbariorum, that is the international database for the Herbarium. It seems that the well, National Museum of Nature and Science does nothing to do with TNS, 
but actually it, the, the name of the, uh, the organization changed recently. And uh, well, still, we keep the uh, PNS as an abbreviation because it, it has been widely known. F is uh, given as a, uh, F is for fungi, and that is given as a part of the uh, collection code. And this is the catalog number. Okay, so if we use the Darwin core terms, each of these information will be arranged in this way. About the location, Japan. And that goes to country. And then country code is JP. This is internationally decided. And uh, state of province is Ibaraki Prefecture, Tsukuba City, and locality is Mount Tsukuba. But these may be changed and uh, arbitrarily uh, well, changed as the time pass by. So we have to keep the original description of the locality in here, in case we make a mistake. But we still can keep the, uh, the original information so that we may be able to change or correct the information later. Uh, minimum elevation in meter is 700, uh, 870. And you don't have to input M because it's in meters, right? But Verbatim elevation is 870m meters. So in case of, well, why we need these two information? Because, well, actual, I mean, verbatim, original elevation may be given in feet, right? Or more, uh, less accurate. And then we still can choose one of the accurate information and choose the information to specific, uh, or for, for specific meters to state the uh, specific uh, elevations. Now, latitude and longitude is the kind of uh, well, tricky one. So it says 36 degrees, 13 minutes, 31 uh, minutes. And also, sorry, uh, that's the seconds, seconds. And uh, the longitude is 140 degrees, 559. Uh, five, uh, five and this is so-called sexagonal. Um, uh, well, conventional way of describing the, uh, the latitude and longitude or coordinations. But in GBIF, we recommend you to use decimal latitude and decimal longitude. I'll tell you about the, the co conversion of these things later. Okay. Now, talking about event, verbatim date is something like that. Verbatim event date is as stated in the, in the text. But the, we can extract the information for year, month, date as 2015, 4, and 15. So this is, again, a kind of a duplication. But sometimes it's become important because well, in this case, we can never make a mistake about 15 April, right? But suppose this was written like 15, oh, sorry, like uh, 9, 6, 2015. So does it mean July, and uh, so June, or does it mean uh, September? So sometimes we make mistakes. And uh, in, well, often in the conventional textbooks or conventional uh, specimens instead of stating April and Roman letter one V. So I V is written. And sometimes we make a mistake. We take a mistake well mistakenly take a six instead of four. Right? So in order to correct the information we need to uh, keep the original information as it is. Occurrence preparations. It was heat dry, so heat dry. And also, we can add associated taxon in here. It was parasitizing on cripples of other species. So we still can keep this information um, as a kind of additional information to the specimen. OK, think about the uh, conversion between longitude and latitude. So you can see that, uh, well, in the conventional style, degree, minutes, sec, uh, 
uh, and seconds. And sometimes seconds are uh, indicated at uh, well, two, more than less than uh, one, uh, using the uh, how should we say? Sorry, the period. Decimal places. <laughs> decimal places. Yeah, decimal. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, well, we but uh, by calculation we can uh, convert this kind of writing to this kind of uh, way of writing. The uh, calculation equation is quite simple. Just add this one, keep up, keep this one, and uh, add minutes dividing the divide divided by sixty, and add seconds divided by sixty again divided by sixty. So. If you keep these information separately in an Excel format, it is easy, very easy to convert to obtain this one. So the advantage of using uh, this decimal, uh, lat decimal latitude and longitude is that we can state that the, any part of the, uh, the any part of the location of the world by having only two digits. But suppose that if you're having a, well, this kind of way of writing, you need one, two, three, four, four elements. And plus, um, well, that's for only for latitude, and then again, for longitude. So and, uh, in case of Japan, we add this kind of uh, codes like this. And sometimes we make mistakes. And also, if you put this in a single cell in Excel, it is no longer Recorded, regarded as digit. It is a letter, so we cannot calculate. So it is much more recommendable to keep all these things in separate columns as degree, minutes, seconds, to keep it as a 8-bit digit so that we can easily uh, calculate this number, okay? So here's the Keep degree, minutes, and seconds, and then uh, you can get the decimal so easily. And uh, here, um, I input the, uh, uh, the function. The function is quite easy. Just add this one as it is, and plus this one divided by 60, and divided by uh, 360. And just add, and then you can get the decimals. And the plus means the, uh, okay, maybe you don't have to do this. <laughs> Take notes about this. You can just think, right? Okay. So in the decimal code, uh, decimal way of uh, coordination, uh, indication of coordination, um, Anywhere in here is plus, indicated as plus. And uh, anywhere up here is minus. So northern latitude is always plus. And southern latitude is minus. So the many places in Asia is always having plus. But uh, if you are uh, away from the center, right, that, uh, that red line uh, here, then uh, you, you have to use the uh, minus degree uh, for the, for the uh, latitude. Okay? So that's about it. And uh, well, if you have the, uh, well, it is possible to uh, to convert decimal uh, longitude or latitude to this way, but the situation, um, 
this equation is uh, becoming more complicated. I wrote this, but uh, well, usually you keep this one to this one. It's much more important. So, well, it's much more easy to keep this. And uh, well, you, you'll be able to see uh, this slides in your uh, USB memory, so you can examine and try by yourself. So here is the example. Okay, uh, converting this figure to this figure, it's easy, right? But uh, well, having conversion from here to here, it's not easy. And you need to see the integer. Uh, this is the in, uh, this is the function called integer, and it gives you the uh, uh, well. The, in, uh, the, it, only the integer part of the, uh, of the given figure. So in this case, uh, this number is given. So 36 is the, uh, the return, uh, uh, return number uh, by this function. Okay? Now, let's go back to the uh, power and core thing. And talking about the Paxson, I gave you, well, in this case, um, I gave you the not only the scientific name and uh, uh, or plus uh, higher rank as well, but usually you only have scientific names only. So in that case, it is possible that you go into some other database to find out which uh, which family or order or classes it belongs. But well, you can also leave it uh, as well. You you can leave it as not noted anything as no data, right? But uh, what I did, well, what is given is fungi, ascomycotel, leuchomyces, heroshellus, hyops, FAC, and the genus name is Desi cyphella, and the specific epithet is longistivitata. Now, this is the rank of, identified to the rank of species. So, taxon rank which is not written in the text, but uh, well, we know, know that this is identified to species. So taxon rank is given as species. And the scientific name authorship is also yeah, my, my name. And these names are under the governance of International Code of Nomenclature, uh, previously called ICBN, but currently it's called ICN. So in case of, uh, this is about botany or uh, mycology, but in case of zoology, if you're dealing with, uh, it should be like ICCM, International College of Zoological Nomenclature. Right? About the identification, so my name is stated. And finally, recorded terms, record level terms. So now the institution is our institution, and it is registered as TNS, so it's called TNS. And the collection code is F from fungi. And here's the catalog number. And all these records are recorded by myself, so you put my name. So if you're going to input the data, you put your name instead. Right? So when you're dealing with the uh, Darwin board, well, you should refer to the text I gave you, but, uh, well, repeatedly, uh, some statements are being done, are being stated. So here's the, I, I, well, I sum up these recommendation as a general recommendation. And uh, first of all, you have to follow international standard when it is available. For instance, institution code. Institution code <laughs> is maintained um, and given in GR bio data. So this is short for Global Registration of Bio-Repositories, yes, sorry. So when you go into GR Bio database, you can search for your institution if it is registered. And that, that provides the uh, internationally recognized abbreviations. In our institute, it is recognized as TNS, and the abbreviation never changes, even if the name of the organization changed. Okay. And uh, about the licensing, please use Creative Commons license. License, a DC license. 
And, uh, well, I use the, uh, well, no, 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 sorry. And, uh, yeah, well, if you're, uh, uh, if you're supposed to input the language, uh, use this standard for language. For instance, well, there are a number of uh, examples in here. So if you go, if you look for the uh, uh, printed uh, materials and look for the language, uh, you can see that E, E, M is for English. Like J, P is for Japanese, something like that. So well, please use the internationally standard, uh, standardized uh, code of these. And uh, well, that is true for uh, time and date. When the multiple volumes uh, values are supposed to be included in one field, they may be separated with a vertical bar like this. So here, um, asko, I mean associated taxa, other catalog numbers. Sometimes single specimen have other catalog numbers. So in that case, you can input two values. But in that case, you have to separate using this code instead of comma, or semicolon, or columns. So please use this. And also, use IDs to set relationship between the records. Well, we have a number of number of IDs in Darwin Core, but uh, if you use the standardized Darwin Core, uh, standardized IDs within your database, and then Relation, making a relationship or setting a relationship is becoming more easy rather than to state every time of the word. So IDs are arbitrarily given or adaptable from other databases. For instance, um, each of the uh, fungal names are, if they are registered, we can find the digital numbers in uh, given in other databases like uh, uh, index fungorum or Michael Bank. Well, these two databases provide digits for each name. So by indicating these names, well, setting a relationship or checking the names is becoming more and more easy because we can refer to the other databases by just inputting the uh, numbers. And in that way, we can avoid the mistake in writing, okay? And use consistent words for description. So in this, well, in the previous examples, um, I used that uh, it was occurring on, cold, occurring on uh, pupils of uh, Fagus granata. But uh, people would say, pupils is a part of the fruit. So people will say, it was occurring in the part of the fruit. Yeah, this is true again. But if you are using a different word to indicate the same thing in the same database, it will make the confusion. So twig and branch, these are the same thing. Wood, log, these are the same thing, meaning the same thing. But uh, if you decide to yourself to use the twig, I will always use twigs. Because you cannot search for branch, and uh, well, if you search for branch, it doesn't hit. Right? So you need to control the wording. This is so-called controlled vocabulary. And if you well, the 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 trick the trick is that you have to be always consistent about using the word. Okay. Okay, that is about the uh, general uh, recommendation about the uh, using the, uh, 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 about the Dali core terms. So it is with uh, well, I was supposed to do this this, uh, this lecture until uh, two thirty, but uh, a little bit early. But uh, this is the end of the first half. Maybe in the second half you may be able to use much time. So I'd like to stop here for the first half. And uh, I'd like to receive your questions if you have. Okay? So, if you have any questions or uh, without discussions, please. Okay, please. Um, uh, now we have yeah. ah, For recording purpose, please uh, use microphones. 
Yeah, for recording purpose, uh, please okay. use microphones. Um, uh, we have seen now we have different tables for the different levels. Are they later to be combined into one table? Uh, so this will be a topic of later. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. And in the second. In the second half, we are going to provide the data uh, like we have uh, this time. And uh, you are going to combine all these data, finding the suitable domain components, um, and work by, by yourself. And uh, well, if you're working uh, using the actual data by yourself, you'll be able to face more difficulties. And, well, you have to think how to overcome. And this is happening to you um, well, in the near future. Well, maybe you are facing the troubles already. And uh, if you raise uh, such kind of a discussion, well, somebody else they have already got the solutions. So, well, this is one of the, the aim of this kind of lecture. So please, um, if you have any questions, please do it now. Yes, please. My question is relating to the uh, institution code. So let me give you a situation. Uh, the certain specimens that I have collected, and they are not currently deposited in any national repository. So let's assume that there are three or four institutions in India where they, where they do hold certain types of specimens. So some institution is for specifically for birds, and some other institutions for maybe lesser taxa groups. Uh, so currently, the data uh, on the specimens is with me, and I do have the codes for my own collection is the codes that I have given for identifying this. So uh, given a situation like this, and I'm not sure where I'm going to deposit these specimens, well, which of these institutions, which may be recognized by GR Bio, how do I present this data? So you mean that uh, you currently? You personally have your collections now, and you would like to uh, well, deposit these deposit at a much later date. I, 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 I'm not, uh, there is no urgency in depositing it there. The primary reason is that, see, for example, my wife works on spiders yeah. and she has got a large collection of these spiders and uh, there is no uh, national repository that there are, but they're, they're not maintaining it in, in, in the uh, conditions that they should be maintained. So she's taking personal interest in maintaining those collections on her own and uh, you know keeping it properly. And then when situation becomes better, then transfer the specimens there. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a unique situation, but yeah, what do we do with that? Uh, well, I'm not sure. So uh, and uh, well, it, yeah, even even though the situation is like that, you still like to open the data, right? That we have this, uh, this, uh, well, this kind of uh, specimens at the personal, uh, as a personal or uh, I'm not sure. Is there anybody um, who have got a suggestion about how to solve this? <laughs> so somebody got the personal collections and they want to register the GP, right? And uh, later uh, they maybe uh, don donate it. Um, transfer it to some other uh, official <laughs> yeah. But I'm not sure whether, um, well, um, it is possible to adapt Darwin Core because, uh, well, to just do database, um, just to have create a database and incorporate the, the or to list all these specimens. And if you're going to list the specimens, well, I'd like you to, I, I want to recommend to use Darwin Core because it's much more compatible to any databases in the world. But whether it is publicized as a well, publication or something, well, that's another story. So talking about the publication through GBIF, we need the uh, endorsement of the node. So in this case, uh, 
So that happens in India, right? So Indian node must have the decision whether it should uh, should be opened uh, or published through GBIF, um, through IPD, right? But in this case, I think the, uh, well, uh, G GBIF Indian node may make a decision that it should be uh, donated. It should be uh, preserved in somewhere, right? So you mean to say that if I want to publish this data on the collections, then it is a must to have an institution code? Um, well, yeah, if you, well, no, I mean, if you're going to publish through GBIF, it may be. Am I right, Lothar? I'm clarifying how it needs to be done. Uh, currently, we will not consider your specimens of spiders as a specimen data, which is hosted in an institution, it would be taken as an observational record for the time being till it is deposited in an institutional repository. So you can publish the information as an observation. So that's an individual collectors. You will be allotted an institution code from the Wildlife Institute of India, because probably from there you will end up publishing it. So it will be taken as only an observational record, not a specimen record, which is possible only when you deposit in a museum or a national repository. Uh, but the good part is you can keep on updating your data, like we mentioned earlier, version word, version 2. So that observational records could become into a specimen records once you deposit it in a museum. So two-step process. Uh, I, yes, that's a very good solution. First, recognize and publish as an observation record and update to specimen records because you now have the physical evidence to support the, uh, 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 support the observation. Yeah. Okay, please. My question is actually related. Um, in Taiwan, we do have a place I can send my specimen to, which I do. And so, is it the responsibility of the museum? Because um, I guess they won't have an other observation of data. All they have is the specimen. So I know they do upload things to GB, but probably just the specimen record, like you mentioned, just, uh, all the data field related to the specimen. Because yes. they don't know what the field condition, which I know. So who is updating what? I mean, the author, the author of the, the author of the public, uh, well, for instance, if you're going to publish some amount of data, right? Well, the, I the, don't mind to keep them all the data, but would they do it as a museum? Like my behavior data, my other phenotype data? Uh, but I, I routinely see my specimen there. Uh, I, I, <laughs> so the point here is uh, the museum will not update anything on its own. If you make those observations that this is all what you have recorded, only then they will end up publishing it. So as so a they specimen, the data field for me? no, you will have to populate the data field yourself. Only then they will help you in publishing. So it is purely whatever work that you have done. How would they know the data is attached to that specimen? Would they, because uh, I can't, I can't update the specimen. They will update the specimen. So we create two data, uh, two records. You have, you have collected the specimens. So you have the information. You have collected the specimens and you have the information. And you have to deposit this in a national repository and you have deposited it. Right. Now that's that's the first stage. Right. Mm. Now you have all the information about the specimens that you have deposited. For some reason, you want to make certain changes mm. in the information that which is contained with the specimens that you have deposited to the museum. You make the changes. The museum will not be able to make the changes because the data is being published by you and not by the museum. But the museum actually has staff to only yes. update the specimen record. Yeah, well, um, uh, maybe Ozosan is going to tell you uh, tomorrow, but uh, publication to GBIF, well, this is a GBIF specific matter, uh, well, you need, uh, you need a special connection between the, uh, to publish the data. 
you need to uh, set up a server uh, to maintain the IPT integration integrated hydrogen <coughs> toolkit. So it, it is only this way you can update the data. So at, well, you yeah you, you right once you provide the data to for for instance some museum in Thailand, well they provide the data through IPT. So if you think that this data is well updated and uh, well I made a wrong mis uh, wrong uh, identification and well this the scientific name is updated right and then you will go on, you will let them know to change or update the part of the database so that they can update the database. So it's a kind of a, well, you, you, well, of course you, if you are, a, it is ideal that you can just go and uh, uh, directly update it better. But, uh, well, from the GV side, well, we should authorize right, who is going to be published. And that's why we have nodes in each country or each uh, institutions or any kinds of registration to the, uh, uh, to the GB. Okay. So, uh, okay. I, I would like to take uh, additional information. I would like to inter uh, explain tomorrow, but I would like to show uh, briefly. GB, the data set has uh, multiple roles. One is a data, data creator. Data creator is not the, the, the not, uh, it, uh, always not the data uh, uh, specimen owner. Specimen owner is, uh, as we say, the museum curator. In this case, contact person or uh, 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 GB has another role. Contact person who who, who, ha, who can uh, answer the, any question or request on, on data set. And other role, data metadata owner, metadata creator, metadata creator is. Uh, such as a PI who don't do the field the data history, but he can, he or she can explain data, the data on that. So there are multiple, multiple role on data set in each data set. But GB, uh, uh, from the GB, GB can uh, keep the one data set. But data set can say multiple role. So uh, if you have a, a node, node can manage each role. And who is the data owner? Who is the data? Create a contact person like that. So it's a one of the so managing and regulation rule on the how to contact, the how to update the data set. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so let us always remember that uh, there's always a misconception about publishing data through the uh, TV. We always uh, remember that. Uh, if you are using IPT, uh, if you want to install an IPT in your own domain, uh, if you want to publish your data set, GP doesn't, um, doesn't uh, store your data. They only just index your data. Meaning, uh, if your IPT is down, uh, it will not be searchable through GP. That's why, for example, as a as uh, node manager for, for example, Gautam or other Indian node manager, uh, if our IPT is down, um, the GB registry cannot access this. Why, why am I saying this? Because um, uh, people who publish their data using the IPT uh, usually, uh, like for example, in a metadata, uh, you, we will, think the, the workshop will show you how to publish this information using IPT. Uh, GB is the one contacting the, the, the main person who published this information. information. Uh, I think GB can, 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 can uh, can index those institution code. Those in institution codes are unique from, from the data publisher, from the owner. So I think it shouldn't be a problem uh, publishing those information uh, information to GB using that. And then I think it will demonstrate uh, how to publish this information. Data <coughs> one from this one. So did you get uh, a clear answer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you have uh, no more questions, uh, okay, here, please. Uh, please bring the microphone.
refer to exercise 1.1. The elevation um, is 870 meter, and then uh, you choose minimum elevation instead of maximum. How do we decide whether it's minimum or maximum? Oh. Yeah, to be exact, you need to fill up 870 to both minimum and maximum, right? Yeah, that's the exact thing. That, well, that's, that, that should be the proper way. But it's, well, sometimes it's, it's really uh, confusing, it's time consuming. But uh, to be exact, that is, the, that, that is the best. So, well, in our case, we usually fill up only 870 if the, if the value is only one. Because uh, that's the, well, but depends on the situation. If you think that is the maximum, then it's 170 maximum, right? But, uh, well, if you can point at 870 directly, then you can feel both feel at the same uh, value. This is a kind of technical. Okay? So, if you have no more questions, uh, I'd like to uh, have a break here. And since we are ahead about 15 minutes, uh